Hello all, this is Robert here with another Tech Geek 311 app review. Uh, if you look at my other previous videos, you'll notice that I did it on the uh, D-Link cloud cameras. Today I'm going to go over the application for the iPhone and iPad uh, to go ahead and show you guys exactly how this thing works. Now this is the application right here, my D-Link Lite. You can see here that you can do the setup from this app as well. Uh, it does work sometimes, doesn't work other times, but uh, like I said, I, I prefer to do it on the PC or the Mac. Uh, you got here the information that shows you what it can do, shows you the camera controls, the pinching zoom, and so forth. Got in here your description, gives you your entire description of the application, what it does. Down here it gives you their update, which you noticed the last update was January of this year. Then of course you have your version histories, developer apps, websites, and so forth. Uh, some people in here have given it sort of bad reviews. Uh, I think it works pretty well. It's not the best in the world, but then again, it does work. Then under related, you're going to get a bunch of other uh, D-Link applications. Uh, I haven't really got into using any of those, but once I do, I'll go ahead and show you guys that as well. Alright, so we're going to go in here and we're going to go into the application itself. Now, if you'll notice, I have four cameras set up. I'm only going to go over two of them because the other two are privately in the home. So what I want to do on the first is on the top right corner we have a refresh button. This is in case you need to refresh the application for some reason. Top left corner you have these three little lines. If you tap on that it's going to give you your applications if you have any other apps installed. It's going to give you your settings so you can sign out. You can mute it as default. You're going to have your push notifications. So if you want to set your push notifications on, you can turn them on from here. When you hit back, it's going to, it's going to automatically reload. Any news that D-Link has, so any service or software updates or anything that goes on. Then you're going to have your help menu. This will give you your help tutorials and all that. And then of course you have your about page. It tells you what uh, version you're using and so forth. Alright, so going back out here, you have your local cameras. These are your cameras connected to your Wi-Fi or to your router or any other cameras you come in contact with. It gives you the ability to add a camera. And then we're going to go into our remote cameras. These are the ones that I'm remotely connected to my Wi-Fi wirelessly so that I can view these cameras anywhere I want. We're going to go into camera 3C. Okay, this is one of our white ones that we have facing the front. Alright, I'm going to mute it so we don't get any backward sound. Okay, this is facing our front door. Now basically this one um, is inside facing a, a glass, so I can't really do much zooming or much panning as much. Uh, I am getting an outdoor dome uh, sent to me from China, so I'll be able to have it outdoors and zoom more. If I tap the screen, you're going to automatically get these arrows. This is your arrows to be able to move that camera. Move it to the left, move it to the right, and if you hit that little center button, it'll automatically center the camera, but we're not going to do it for this one right now. On the bottom, you're going to get a little camera. That's if you want to take a snapshot of here. Next to that, you're going to get the resolution, 480p and so forth. And then you're going to get another one that looks like it's sun. So you can either do day mode, night mode, or have it automatically switch between the two. And then you get this little eye, and this gives you the camera name, gives you the model number, uh, resolution, type, and so forth. Top right corner, you get these three little lines. It's going to give you your settings page. Go into your settings. Now, it's not going to give you that much setting in here. You're going to have your sound detection, your motion detection, and this one comes with an extender mode, so I have that turned on. You can also change the name here if you want, just by tapping on device name. So let's go back out of here. Let's go back out of that. All right, now we're going to go into camera 4D. This is the one I set up in my other previous video. Okay. And now this one here, of course, you see me. Hello, there I am. Okay, I got it facing my back just because that's where I have it uh, set up that we're doing. Now, we're going to go in here and I'm going to show you how far this thing zooms down. So I'm going to do the down zoom. Unfortunately, that's what I said, that's why this app is, you have to keep tapping the screen to get those arrows. But, let's say we're down here, I get the screen black, now I can pinch and zoom in. So just like you would any photo on the iPhone or iPad, you can do the same zoom controls. Now, from here, tap that center button and watch. It's going to recenter itself. Now, this is what I like about these cameras the most. I'm going to zoom up, and I'm going to continue to zoom up. 
and I want you to see exactly how high this camera can zoom up and it's going to automatically switch to day mode you saw that because it's it's facing the light above my head okay and I'm going to continue zooming up and you can see pretty much how far this thing can actually zoom up in the, in the sky and see I'm still zooming up alright and there you go that's about its maximum height right there can't go any higher so now I want to center it back to where I was hit that center button it'll automatically pan down and then like I said it'll switch to night mode because it's a little darker behind me and if you notice down here on that bottom corner it shows a, a sun and a moon I have it on auto mode there if I tap on that it's going to give me the options on the bottom what I want to do give you the eye it's going to give you the name tell you the model number and so forth if I go into settings same thing it only gives me the motion detection only for this one so you don't have sound detection or anything but you can set the motion it says for additional uh, settings to go into the uh, the mydlink.com app or not app but uh, website and from there you can go ahead and you can re go to, to the settings and change them and make them whatever you want uh, now I have to say though on the Mac and on the PC that advanced settings does run a little bit slow um, so do be patient with it. You will get in there, but uh, depending on your connection, it is going to run you a little slow. Alright guys, so that basically is it. And uh, these cameras, I have used them uh, all around. I've traveled all around and I've, I've been able to access them for anywhere I'm at. One word of caution though, if you do have a, a power surge in your house or your property or wherever you have these cameras, you will get a notice saying that you cannot connect to the cameras. All you have to do is wait till the power comes on, it'll reboot the cameras, and then you'll have access to them. Uh, but they do work, despite all the reviews that people have given. I have tested these cameras, I have them working now currently in my home and in places, and I have to say that they do work. So I recommend these cameras in case you guys are interested in some cameras for security and you don't want to pay a monthly fee. These are some good cameras to get. There are other ones on the market, but these I put through the review. Alright, so if you guys like this video, Go ahead and hit that like below. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys later with some more.